Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this uh, preseason webinar uh, information session for TAPS Cheer 2022. My name is John Skies, and I am the director of media for TAPS. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes, but I've got a couple of housekeeping items to go over with you first. And first on that list, this webinar is being recorded. That recording is going to be hosted on our YouTube page. You can find that at youtube.com slash tapsbiz. You can find recordings of all of our public webinars and training sessions there. It's all on a playlist. You're going to receive a link to that later today uh, at the same email address that you used to register for today's webinar. We put it on YouTube so it'll be easy for you to review this information and you can share it with anybody on your campus that needs this information as well. Second, if you have any questions, please use the questions feature in the GoToWebinar interface. You're going to see a little drop-down menu on that GoToWebinar panel, and one of them says questions. You can type them in there. We're going to try to answer questions as we go uh, through the presentation, but if we don't get to them right away, there is a, uh, a general Q&A session after the presentation, uh, so we can play catch up there. If we run out of time, if we don't get to your question, or if it's just too specific to answer appropriately in this venue, uh, and we don't answer it on the air, please send us an email, info at taps.biz, or call us at the office, and we will get you sorted. Um, a couple of media-related announcements to those of you just joining us. We're going to let a few more people connect. Uh, we've got a Twitter account for Cheer. Uh, please follow at Taps Cheer. Uh, if you've got an account related to your Cheer program or your school, uh, if you're posting stuff, please tag us. We love to see what our member schools are up to, and we love retweeting and sharing that stuff. Also, we've also got a couple of uh, cheer-related episodes on our podcast. That's Taps Talk. We've got a deep dive into cheer, and we've got a, s a smaller, a shorter episode that's just what it's like to be at a cheer championship. Uh, and you can find those anywhere you listen to podcasts or on our website, taps.biz slash talk. Okay, looks like more people have joined us. Uh, I am joined today in the conference room at the Taps office by Brian Bunzelmeyer, Taps Executive Director. Rhonda Smith, TAPS Director of Fine Arts. Uh, Will Dixon from the TAPS office staff is helping us out behind the keyboard today. And joining us remotely a little bit later, maybe there were some technical issues, uh, would be Chris Henson of Express Cheer. Uh, Express Cheer is our partner for this event. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Brian. Thank you, John, and good morning. Welcome to TAPS Cheer 2022. We're so excited to be able to say it's almost year 10. We're working through that with our cheer program. Uh, as we go forward, uh, it's week one of football, so everything seems to come together right here. Uh, all is well in the state of Texas, I think, when football starts and the cheerleaders, the band, the uh, the dance team and everybody else get to show up and participate. But right now, let's talk about cheer in the competition season. Uh, like uh, John said, I'm joined by Rhonda Smith. She is our director of fine arts and uh, proud to have Rhonda here. The rest of our TAP staff that will be here to help you. Uh, we've got some rank one issues that need to go through. Those rank one things can be handled best in our office by Kelly Bay. That's K-E-L-L-I at taps.biz or info, I-N-F-O at taps.biz. So don't let rank one scare you. It's a big old program, but we'll help you walk through, and Rhonda has some more on that as we go. A little bit of history as we bounce in. We are powered by Express Cheer and Chris Henson. Chris was was here at the beginning. Uh, he was part of that operation with Billy Smith and Spirit Celebration. Uh, we slid on through to Kerry Coleman and FCC, and now Chris Henson expressed cheer the last three or four years. Chris and his staff do an excellent job for the TAPS competition, and the best part about it is uh, they are cheer coaches, cheer directors. They understand the cheer world, but they also understand TAPS. So to Chris Henson and his staff, can't say enough good things about where they brought our competition and they're here to help you they're here to be your advisor uh, ultimately they don't judge they're they're good that's the good part they hire the judges but the good news is they're here to help you do the best you can do when you get to the competition so Rhonda I've said a lot so Rhonda Smith our director of fine arts is going to jump in lead us through a little governance and then you'll have to put up with me a little bit more down the road Thank you, Brian. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And we are excited about the upcoming year and just what it holds for everyone. And if you're new and this is your first year to cheer, um, welcome. We're excited to have you with us. And when you have questions, please uh, don't hesitate to call the office or write us at info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz. And 
right off the bat, we're going to go into a little bit of governance, which will actually help you as you are um, pr planning your routines and things like that so that you'll know in what division you are um, going to be participating in. And if you go to our Constitution and Bylaws, and I'm going to have Will jump to our website for just a second. And if you go to our website in the top left hand corner, it says bylaws. I'm not going to have him click on that right now because it is a huge document. But once it loads, you scroll all the way down to the bottom and you will have section 260, which is going to be our cheer specific um, bylaws. This is where um, also your divisions are listed. So if you're not exactly sure which division you're going to be in, here is where you'll find them. And then I'll discuss those in um, a little bit later on um, on in, in the webinar. Also on that um on the cheer page, if you go to the cheer page, there's a place for rules. You'll see our rules for the TAPS rules and the NFHS spirit rules, which we also follow. <clears throat> Excuse me. Moving right along, we're going to go to a little bit of student eligibility. This is where you figure out if your kids are eligible to participate or not. They need to not be 19 prior to September 1st. They need to be a full-time day student, which is they are sitting in your school and in your classrooms for at least four subjects a day that makes them that full-time student they cannot have been in ninth grade more than four years because we do have a four-year uh, contiguous uh, eligibility for taps and then they just have to be a high school student in good standing brian those are the same rules we have in all competitions for TAPS, and uh, for the most part, we try to stick with them. Uh, I think most of the students in TAPS, we've got 41,118 kids registered in TAPS school, so for the most part, they'll fit the bill. If you have somebody that falls outside of that classification or when they do their rank one profile you questions, please reach out to us, info at taps.biz, or give the TAPS office a call. The other part about eligibility uh, is the no pass, no play, so if you uh, have a couple of students as you go on down the road that may be in danger there please let us know we'll help you walk down that path too so student eligibility it's in the taps constitution it's in the bylaws it's kind of uh, the rules that govern our participation not just cheer but it also governs every other activity Rhonda, talk to us a little bit about rank one and what that would mean there as well okay thank you brian yes rank one has become um, a very vital tool to us as we are getting everyone set up and uh, getting them eligible and getting you set up where you can actually um, get all of the emails that you need. A couple of things that you need to make sure if you are the fine art director, I you need to go in and make sure that um, you have all of your contact information correct and that you have all of the other um, program directors, assistant program directors listed correctly in rank one. This is actually where we pull our lists and when we send communications from the office, this is where we get the um, updated emails. So please make sure that is correct. The other thing you need to do is complete your acknowledgement of rules and that is found in your toolkit or actually below the toolkit, sorry, on the bottom left-hand page of your bottom hip. I'm sorry, words are hard this morning. It is on the left-hand side of the home page of your Rank 1 account. There we go. Also, when you ask to be SCOPE certified, that is also on that bottom left-hand side. When you click there, you will see there's an area of three choices. You can do athletics, fine arts, or athletics and fine arts. And it says, hey, I've watched this video. If you click the checkbox, it does not do anything. Make sure you click on the actual words fine art. That will actually open up the presentation that you need to have um, watched to show that you are going to be compliant with your scope certification. Also, you need to make sure all of your students are in rank one and they have completed their student profiles. If they're transfer students, all that good kind of stuff, make sure all the paperwork is into the office. They also must have completed an acknowledgement of rules. They need to have a medical history on file. And for your cheer students, you need to have a physical on file. And Brian's going to talk to us just a minute about that. Again, there are a few fine arts that do require the medical history. That's for your nurse or your athletic trainer as well as the, uh, the physical. Obviously, in the cheerleading uh, setting, uh, physical would be important as we get forward. So we ask that you do that as soon as possible. Uh, that would help us go ahead and get you ready for the cheer season, especially if you're doing a lot of stunning or whatever. You want to make sure everything is, is ready to rock and roll. So cheerleading does require that medical history. It does require uh, the physical in order for students to be able to compete. 
again, sooner you can get it done, or they may already have it done. Just make sure it's uploaded in rank one. I'm gonna say it's a it's a good thing. I'm being told that Chris Henson is now on the call. So uh, with Rhonda having a hard morning with her words, and with me being the executive director of Taps, we finally got the guy that knows cheer. Uh, he's gonna rock through. Chris, if you're there, uh, thank you for joining us, and thank you for uh, powering Taps cheerleading competition. Yeah, hey, thanks, Brian. I'm excited to be here and excited for what we're going to do this season with the TAPS Cheer Championship. Yeah, thank you for thank you for being here. I'm going to finish up on some rank one, and then in a minute I'm going to ask Chris some questions, maybe put him on the spot, but he is the one, as uh, Brian said, that knows everything near and dear to cheers. So the other thing that we need to cover in rank one is make sure you have created your varsity team and built your roster. You just need to have your kids on your roster and later um, in the season when it gets closer to competition time, we'll ask for program rosters and you can put if they're captains, co-captains in their positions and upload team pictures and things like that. So that is one reason why it's so important to have all of your information up to date in rank one, because when we start sending out this information, this is um, vital that you get all of the communications. And speaking of communications, I'm going to have Will pop to our website again. It's www.tapstopbiz. And up at the top, you'll see Fine Arts. And once you click on that, you will see all of the Fine Art events that TAPS offers. And if you click on Cheer, You'll be taken to the cheer page that has everything you, you need to know about cheer. The top button says championship information 2022. If you click on that, that has everything. It has where it's going to be, which divisions are when. It has the location, has maps to the facilities. And we'll be updating that as we go through um, through the season. We'll have that. So check back uh, periodically to that. If I have you back up one screen to the cheer page. Any email that we send will also turn into a blog on the right side of that cheer page. So everything we've already sent out, like the fine art preseason webinar information, is the last thing. So if you're thinking you're missing something, you can check here, check there periodically. You'll find out all of the new communications that have um, come from the office. Now, here's some important stuff, the dates that you need to know. September 1st, we have participation forms due. Now, that is the participation form that your school turns in to show every activity that they are going to be participating in, not just cheer. So you don't have a participation form, but you might want to check with your athletic director and make sure that they have cheer uh, selected as one of the activities that you are going to be uh, participating in. Uh, transfer deadlines for seniors. November 16th is an important date because that is your entry deadline. If you look at the TAPS calendar on our website, everything that is in red is a deadline. So that should be on November 16th and everything that's bright yellow is a championship. So when we see that in December on the 5th and 6th, that leads us to our large and small championship days and this year we will be back at the Bell County Expo Center in Temple. So we look forward to, um, to seeing you there. Chris, do you have anything you want to add? I'm about to talk about the competition, but is there anything you'd like to say up front that they need to be um, aware of coming into the competition? Um, I think if I, anything is make sure that you are double checking your rules reading the rubrics that are online so just like uh we showed you can go to the the taps cheer page where you can cross reference the rubrics versus the number of kids make sure that you know which division you're in um, and then if you're not sure about something feel free to reach out to me personally i know tons of coaches have already um, as they're going into choreography and preparing uh, there's never too many questions and I'm happy to answer as many as you need me to. Okay, that's awesome. And uh, maybe in a minute, if you don't mind, we'll get your email and uh, send it out to them um, so that they can follow up with you if there's questions that we definitely can't answer in the office. Um, on competition day, just going through this and Chris, please jump in if um, you see I'm uh, getting off the beaten path, but you will perform twice. You'll have a round one performance, which will be 40% um, of your overall score. 
uh, you will have warm-ups. We'll have all of that. Schedule is not out yet, but once we get all of our participation forms in on the first, we'll be able to see who is actually um, intending to participate, and then we can start making the schedules uh, from then. But you'll you'll warm up, you'll perform, you'll get a review after that performance, and then that afternoon you will perform again, uh, round two, which this routine will uh, count 60% of your overall score and will usually uh, go from ranking lowest to highest in the afternoon. So that would be your performance order. So you'll know by your scores how that's going to go. We also have a mascot comp uh, competition. So if you have a mascot, uh, we do on our website on the cheer page have a button that says here's the um, outline for what you need to do as a mascot. And we also have a video on there that's really cool. We'll put together a video of our past um, mascot competition so it's a lot of fun to watch so if you're not sure about that go on there and watch that and then at the end we have the individual skills where we do the jump tumble and stunt and those are um, individual and those are a lot of fun to watch and there's a lot of energy there's always a lot of energy through the day but there's a, seems to be um, a lot during that time too the next thing I did uh, want to make oh, go ahead. one quick, quick clarification. Um, when we switch to the teams competing twice in the same day, mm -hmm. we do not do reverse order of scores anymore. Oh, we, I'm we very sorry. The, okay, it's okay. It's just nope. we made that one change, and okay. that was that way there would be the same amount of time for everyone between their initial performance and their second okay. performance. Okay, that's great. Thank so, you for for just so to me just on know that. Yes, that you you will compete in the same order that you competed in prelims. You will okay. do the same in finals. All right. Thank you. Yep. Yeah, I think um, I think I had COVID brain last last year, so I wasn't at at Cheers, so um, I, I missed that change. So thank you very much. That's why that's why we have you here. Um, on the the next slide, it talks about maximizing your routines, and I think Chris just uh, touched on this, and he said, make sure you know your rules. If you'll go to the cheer page for me. Um, down, if you scroll towards the bottom, you will find the um, the buttons that talk about uh, rubrics and progressions. If you uh, would you click on that for me? Thank you. That shows you here's all your rubrics for your traditional, and then your progressions, and then you have your building skill charts and tumbles charts. So you want to make sure that you are definitely aware of that. Brian, you have something to add? Hey, Chris, uh, basically, if you could give us a quick recap of the rubrics, not necessarily piece by piece, but the fact that uh, over the years that we have listened to the coaches, we've uh, especially listened to you and your staff, and we've uh, pretty well defined the rubrics uh, to the point they are now. I don't see any changes coming unless uh, you had thought of anything in the interim. Can you, If you could address the rubrics and just how that goes a little bit for us. Sure. So, yes, the rubrics are – how they're going to be for this season. We do have some adjustments coming for 2023, but for 2022, what you see on there is what we're going to be using. I think um, if you are uh, familiar with cheer or you've done competition cheer previously, throw out what you know. Um, TAPS approaches it completely different, and I appreciate the way they approach it. Uh, they look at it from the perspective of uh, safety and also the wide variety of demographics that they have as far as talent pool, size of teams, et cetera, in their different schools. So the way that this is designed is we'll talk about two different things. Um, tumbling first, and I think this is where a lot of coaches and choreographers are missing the boat. For your tumbling, there's not a standing tumbling and then a running tumbling category. You have a tumbling category period. So you don't have to do both. We're not suggesting that you don't. Um, for overall performance, having both sections in there is great. However, for purposes of scoring to get into the range for tumbling, um, you notice this one caveat. So uh, I'm gonna pull it up just to make sure I read the right thing to you guys um, real quickly. Which one are here. you going to? And we will click on it for, we can click on it. Sure. For uh, let me tell you which, which one it's on really yes, quickly. Sir. That way we get the right thing out here. Um, You'll notice, so if you click on the tumble and jump chart, so it's the purple on the right-hand side, you click on that chart and you and it, you see that it talks about quantities. So we'll talk about 15 as our number. For you to get into the range, um, it's at 50% plus one, then you've got to have eight tumblers. Scroll to the bottom of that page and you can see it says, uh, running, tumbling, and skills performed throughout the routine 
are accumulated. So if you're doing running tumbling, you can recycle. So maybe I only actually have five friends on my team that can tumble. But as long as three of those tumble again, making a cumulative of eight athletes that tumbled in that routine, it will put me into range. However, if you're doing standing tumbling only in your routine for some reason, that one has to be synchronized. So there's an out for coaches when they're building these routines to give their their their, um, their teams a best opportunity to be successful. So really think about recycling your running tumbling, knowing that you're standing tumbling, and then also your jumps have to be synchronized. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. Um, so that's one of the things I think that's really big to notice. Um, the other thing that TAPS does is it divides its numbers, especially for stunting, by the number of five. So when you're looking at that quantity chart, so if you click on, if you go back and click on the building skill chart, you're going to see that the majority stunt group is made up of five. And it even says it on the score sheet at the very top of that particular category that the number is by five. So you can see like when we did um, like a team of 15 once again, and you divide 15 by five, you have to do three stunt groups. Also notice this when you go to stunts, for you to get into range, um, you only have to do one skill inside of whatever range you're wanting to try to hit. So if your goal is to hit in the elite range, then you would cross-reference back over to those skills progressions. You could see what skills are listed in elite, and then the majority of your team would have to do that elite skill. So in this category, in this scenario, there are 15 athletes on our team. Three stunts need to go up just and those three stunts all need to do an elite stunt together to get you in range. Then after that, you can mix and match and put other skills in there. So those are two major differences when we look at building and uh, tumbling than what some other championships do. And I think that makes it uh, gives a good opportunity for you to highlight your teams, um, have some creativity in your routines, and make your kids feel super successful. So, Chris, would it be a good idea also to look back through those rubrics as either if you've got your routine already developed or as you're developing your routine just to make sure that – and I think that's where the questions come. I'm looking at the rubric. I'm looking at the progression chart. Am I really making this or not? That's where we're encouraging the questions to come. And the earlier the questions, the longer uh, lead uh, runway you have to fix it, so to speak. Yeah, absolutely. And I know, like I've said, tons of coaches have called me or reached out to me prior to their choreography day, or some of them actually on the day of their choreography and said, hey, make sure I'm doing this right. And then I was able to clarify for them to make sure that they weren't like laborly intensive, putting their kids through their paces when they didn't need to. Um, so feel free to reach out to me about that. Also, if you have questions about safety and what's allowed, remember that TAPS uh, cross references with NFHS. Um, so you need to look at those roles as far as what's allowed. Um, from a safety perspective, but then look at our rules for what you need, what, what skills you need to get into range. So, yes, and I'll be happy to share my email, um, and you can reach out to me at any time. We'll probably share that out in our email back, or you can always email us at info, I-N-F-O, at taps.biz, and we'll forward that on over to Chris. So, again, Chris, you were here kind of from the beginning, and you've seen this progression. I think that just really is such an asset. I know I would be the guy that would be having my phone and hand it to my choreographer and say, now talk to the guy that knows. So, just you've always been a great resource. Your staff does a great job. We appreciate everything you do on that side. So, uh, when we talk about maximizing the routines, I think that is something as a coach, you do that in every activity we do. Uh, Chris, talk to us just a little bit more, just to recap it again. What is the 50% plus one? I know some people have already asked me that in some emails, which was weird. But anyway, 50% 50 plus, 50 plus one, how did we get, if you, just, if you remember, how did we get to that and why are we there? Yeah, so we want to set the bar where there's a certain number of athletes doing that skill. So that's how we came to that. When we do that 50% plus one, so think about uh, stunts, for example. We're saying not half of your kids are doing this, this skill, but like for stunts specifically, that 50% is 50%. When you divide the number of kids on your team, so 15 divided by five is three stunts, 50% plus one, that, so that would be two stunts plus one. So that's the three. That's how you get to that. Um, and so kind of, you're just kind of watching those numbers um, when you're putting it together. And once again, reach out. I think the other thing that TAPS does um, that's really great, and I have told coaches many times, pay attention to this, 
that automatically everyone goes and looks immediately at the skills chart. And then they look at how many ports, points are gonna be awarded in that. What they're missing is that TAPS really values execution. Once again, they really support safety. So if you'll notice that when you look at those score sheets, that the, safe, the execution part of that is many times worth more than the actual skill itself. So we're really asking you to make sure that your kids are safe, especially in your stunts and pyramid sections. For example, if you'll look at uh, the stunts and pyramid score sheet, your, your skills are only worth up to um, a max of five, and that's for your difficulty, right? So whether it's basic, intermediate, advanced, or elite, but your execution is worth eight. So what we're, what we're implying and what we're telling you is we would rather see you do a less difficult stunt that's done really well than to do a really, really hard stunt and do it poorly. So if a team, let's say, for example, if a team does an elite stunt and they go, they do the hardest possible thing you can do. So they get a five, but they do it horribly and they end up getting a four on execution. Well, that's a cumulative of only nine points where another team might do the advanced stunts and they're going to max out and they do the hardest advanced stunts they can do. They do, a, they get a four and they do it flawlessly. So now they get eight points for execution. Well, now their cumulative is 12. 12 will clearly beat nine every time. So be smart about the way you are choreographing and the, what you're setting your kids up to do. That hard does not always equal the most point value. And that's the way this score sheet was designed. So pay attention to your execution points as well and make sure that the, the skills that your kids are doing are done safely first and then secondly that they're flawless. I think the biggest key words to me as we've been for like 10 years now is that do what you do, but do it well. I mean, that's the, Correct. you know, take, be, be honest. I think that's the hardest thing when I'm coaching, uh, whether it be a speech or a person or somebody doing something else is be honest with yourself as to what your capabilities are. Uh, that's not saying you don't stretch early and see if you can gain, uh, but make sure by the time you get there, you're in that realm. So, Rhonda, let's jump down to divisions. It's always a big question about is where are we uh, going to land? I think everybody wants to know what division am I going to be in right away, but we're kind of in that weird part of the season right now. Uh, we're still getting TAPS contracts in to see who's going to participate, and then we really won't know divisions until we get later in the year when everybody's actually telling us how many folks are going to be on their squads and what they're looking at doing. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much, Chris, for all of that information. It's um, it's invaluable. But on the divisions, you can see, um, I put them on the slide. This is how we usually break them down by the large squads or the larger schools and then the smaller schools. And then we have a spirit squad. But like Brian said, until all of the um, participation forms come in, we will not know and then we'll be asking you how many squad members you have and all that so that we can determine the divisions and everything as we get uh, closer to time and then get the schedules and everything out this is also found in the bylaws and that's still section 260 and it's the very first thing in the bylaws if you're going through this is where you will find those divisions there's always that little asterisk that says taps reserves the right to change their mind uh, been doing this now for 17 years at TAPS. So if we get top heavy or bottom heavy, we definitely will do our very best to split the divisions where it's equitable. Uh, and some of your schools have moved up. Some of them have moved down. So make sure when you're looking at how many A's are behind your name, if you were a 5A last year, make sure you're still a 5A. That helps us to rock through there. So let's jump on to the next one, which is going to be uh, the traditional versus spirit. So Chris, if you could lead a little bit here and then we'll chime in as well. Sure. So um, when we talk about traditional, if you've done uh, competition cheer before, you would really consider this. A lot of you will use the word performance. So I think when you think traditional, think performance cheer. Um, and it's broken up into kind of two sections. How you mix and match is up to you. It's a two and a half minute routine with um, a max of one and a half of those of that time being from music. So one and a half is music. The other can be a minute for, for your cheer. Um, and whenever you cross-reference, once again, you're going to notice that uh, the, the most points actually come from your crowd leading. Um, crowd leading can be approached in a, a couple of different ways. However, you do want it to be easy for the crowd to follow. So it truly is um, for them to be able to yell back and have audience participation. Um, the use of props is highly encouraged. So flags, um, palms, megaphones, signs, et cetera. 
Um, and then, of course, look at your rubrics and make sure you're including all of the elements that you need in there, um, your jumps. Make sure you pay close attention to what jumps are required. Um, it's, a, it's a three plus one or just a three. So those have to be connected. They have to have a variety. We'll see some, some other championships that only require a two plus one. Um, if you if you show up at TAPS and you only do two connected jumps with a single jump, you're not going to get into the high range and you're going to be over at our review station really upset with yourself and upset with us because you missed that. So make sure you pay close attention to that to those jumps. That's three connected jumps with variety to get you into the high range. Um, and then, of course, stunts, pyramids, tosses, and tumbling. Um, tosses is also an interesting category, so watch that. Um, those, you have to have a certain number of tosses. Those do not have to be in the same section, nor do they have to be synchronized. So you can, once again, tosses are a cumulative throughout your routine as well. Um, and notice those have to have a variety. So, um, you have to have a twisting skill and then also a regular skill. Um, and you can hit the baseline of those. So for you to get into that variety, you could throw a straight toss and then you could also throw a full basket those would then check off those boxes for you. Um, so make sure that you're being smart about what you're doing. So that's kind of tra traditional slash performance in a nutshell. When we move over to the spirit division for a, a lot of people would refer to that as a game day. Um, and that's broken up into three categories. You've got your band chant, fight song and crowd leading. Um, each of those sections is a max of one minute with a total of three minutes for your routine. Make sure that you leave time in between your sections for transition so you don't go over time. So we usually suggest that uh, 45 to 50 seconds is the max for each of those sections to just to make sure that you don't get any uh, over limit penalties. There's no requirement in regards to the order that you do that band chant fights or crowd leading. It's your option how you want to spice that up and put them together. Um, and then notice that there are no stunts, no, pyrids, no pyramids, no tosses, no tumbling. However, jumps are required and jumps need to be in every single one of those uh, sections. So you want jumps in your band chant, you want jumps in your fight song, you want jumps in your crowd leading. Does not mean it has to be a synchronized jump. It also doesn't mean it has to meet a certain number of jumps. Um, it could just be truly like what you do on the sideline and it could be jumps that are sprinkled in. Um, band chant should be a combination of uh, like eliciting crowd participation as well as some creative movement. So we, we don't use the word dance because we don't want it to be a dance, but it does have some of those elements. You want some ripples, uh, some things that are synced. Then when you go to fight song, you want to think more traditional motions. Um, and by the way, fight song does not have to be the fight song that you use at school. So if your fight song is uh, antiquated or it's just really super old, um, or it doesn't meet the requirements for competition, um, you can feel free to create your own fight song that's specific to uh, for this championship. And then for crowd leading, of course, once again, uh, you really want to utilize props to make it creative and think crowd coverage. For all of these, think, think crowd coverage. You're typically cheering on a sideline, on a track, so it's not super deep. Even though our mats are 42 feet um, in depth, we don't need to see like bowling pins and those kinds of intricate formations. Those can happen, but we shouldn't be static in those. Um, so once again, think covering all nine mats. And for some of those smaller schools, I know you're thinking to yourself, I've got nine kids, there's nine mats. How I'm gonna do that? Put a kid on every mat at some point during those sections. Um, and then once again, utilize those crowd leading props like signs, palms, uh, flags, et cetera, and, and get creative and have fun. So that's kind of them in a nutshell. Chris, I think one thing we'll do as well is we're gonna we've got the mascot uh, video up. We'll try to do some cuttings of some of the uh, spirit squad cheer and some of the uh, traditional. That way, folks can say, "Hey, this is where we are." I do think the nine mats. I'm glad you mentioned that seems to come up every year, especially with the smaller squads. But if you know what you're going in, playing your routine, I think you can get there. One of the things that comes to my mind is the way the day will work. You'll warm up. You'll come in. You'll be on deck. You'll come out. You'll perform, and then you'll go immediately after you get off the mats for performance and you'll go back and just get a visual review but one of the things that we've always tried to do at taps is provide that curricular opportunity especially after the first routine a chance to go back so talk to me a little bit or talk to our folks a little bit about what they can expect when they after the routine 30 minutes after whatever when they actually get to review with y'all 
Yeah, so a couple of things happen, um, what, what Brian's describing is, so as soon as your athletes get done performing, they're able to go to an immediate review station. Most of them, a lot of times, haven't have never seen the routine. So this is really an opportunity for celebration. There, there's no feedback at this station. It's just an opportunity for the kids to kind of rally and say, we did it. Um, once they're done with that, um, typically your score sheets are available about 30 minutes um, after your performance. So pay attention. We want you to pick those up. It's really important. And then we really encourage that once you pick up those score sheets, even if you don't have any questions, that you probably come back and you watch that routine again. But for sure, if you're not, if you're un, unsure about um, something on your score sheet, then you're going to want to come to to the review station with one of our staff members, not the one that your kids went to. That's for them to preview it. But there's another one which we refer to as like our AccuScore. You'd come back over to AccuScore, and that place is where you get to ask specific questions. Really approach that as a moment of education. Um, you don't want to be combative or this isn't our routine and we will also approach it the same way we we are there to support you and there to help you be better um so if you get your scores and you were expecting to be in the highest section um as far as scores for that for you thought you had elites and they didn't go or you thought you had elites and you feel like you didn't receive credit for those we'll review those uh we'll review the routine with you we'll look at it against your score sheet listen our judges are also human and so if we find an error we will correct that um, but that's an opportunity for us to comb that routine together. And then hopefully you make some adjustments if needed um, going into your finals routine. Um, we also send out a, a critique um, as well. So we have someone that's sitting on the panel that will email that to you. Um, sometimes technology is not our friend. And we had a few glitches with that last year, but I think 99% of everyone got those as well. So there's kind of three opportunities. Your kids get a celebration moment to watch the routine. Um, you're going to get a commentary that's over the top of your routine that's emailed to you. And that's just, you can share that with your kids if you want. Um, it's one of our judges kind of verbally going through the routine and giving you some feedback. And then of course you get the judges score sheet and an opportunity to review at our AccuScore station. Um, and then potentially make adjustments if you need to for finals. So it's a pretty comprehensive uh, opportunity for everyone. And hopefully when you leave, you feel like you were heard um, and that you, you, are, you are as successful as you can be. I think that uh, that has developed into one of the best things about the competition, Chris, especially after your first routine where you're able to go over there. Uh, maybe you thought you hit everything, maybe from a higher viewpoint where the judges are sitting, maybe not. Uh, but also it's a chance for folks to hear, hey, you did a really good job. I mean, that's the other part of the review is that when they do good, they get to hear they did good. And I think positive reinforcement going along with, hey, these are a couple of things to look at. But I've been impressed over the years being able to watch and see, hey, the difference between if they've come and picked up their score sheet, if they've come and, and actually visited during the review, I think that second time to go back through the routine, get through the nerves a little bit, maybe the first one and the second one comes back even better. So, And that will move us towards the awards. I'm going to let Rhonda cover those just really quickly, uh, just so folks will know. We, we do hand out a little bling, maybe not as much as some, but we hand out a lot. Yeah, we do have fun at the end getting to hand out these awards. Um, as you are ranked, the top four in each division will receive uh, plaques. Each routine also will be given a rating. And if you receive a superior rating, you will also receive a plaque. You could get superior, excellent. Um, I don't know that we've gone lower than those because usually we have some outstanding routines. Individual awards that we give out will be first team All-State, second team All-State, and honorable mention um, All-State. Those will be uh, you, you as directors and coaches will be uh, giving us your nominations when you sign in um, at the competition and you'll have up until um, you know about 30 minutes before the end to if you had a change of uh, change of name or whatever but you could do that mascots will also get uh, certificates and medals and the individual skills winners for each of the um, jumps and tumbles they will the winner will get a medal and a certificate and second through fifth because they'll be the the team that wins they will receive certificates so it's a great day for anybody that's there and they can get all of those awards 
Chris, I know it's near and dear to your heart. Uh, we've actually cut some of the mascot competition, made a video of that. But what what is your expectation for the mascot? I, I just encourage everybody, if you've got a mascot and they're used to being a part, uh, maybe not necessarily the big routine, but especially in the individual mascot routine, what, what are you looking for for folks that want to come out there and challenge themselves that way? So it's not necessarily just what I'm looking for, but I think um, – Mascots are a huge fan favorite. The crowd actually loves them. I think it's a highlight of the day. Um, so you're looking for an opportunity for there to be some character development, um, for those mascots to tell a story, for them to elicit a response from the crowd. Um, I want everyone to pay really close attention uh, that, that I believe that the TAPS rules say that we're not supposed to include the cheerleaders in that um, because their focus that day is actually on the routine. So make sure that you're not utilizing them uh, into your routine. Um, but some, some props, some uh, over the top life, uh, incorporate music and things of that nature and just really go out there and entertain the crowd and something that's maybe super special or specific to your school. So just a good entertainment value. I think it's great to entertain. I think it is kind of a free-for-all. Some go a little farther than others. But we just encourage, uh, you know, it's an opportunity for, for probably the mascot that's not usually the focus, but uh, they become the focus for that t a few minutes that they're on the mat and with the others. And, again, you're doing something you love to do with other people that do what you love to do. We talked a little bit about the jumps and tumbling runs. Uh, that's been incorporated really since the beginning uh, what, what, what do you see with that? I mean, the, it's the individual skills as well. So we get through the second round and prior to the awards uh, with each day, we'll come back and do the jumps and tumbling run. What, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, so what we love about that is a couple of things. One, um, during us doing like the final tabulations for awards, it gives the kids an opportunity to be involved. Um, so there's not a static point in our day. Um, but the other thing it does is I think it gives kids an opportunity to get out there and build some self-confidence, to show off some skills that maybe they wouldn't have shown in the routine. Um, sometimes the limitations of the routine, just time constraints don't allow you to get everything in there you want. Um, if you've gone into the, the spirit uh, squad category and no jumps or tumbling are offered in, in that particular division, this gives those kids an opportunity to get out there and highlight some of their skills as well. So I think it just allows everyone to be seen. Um, and if you've been to TAPS, then you, you, then you've experienced basically what we do is we call everyone down. So for jumps, we start with a single jump and we put multiple judges out there and they're basically in lines and they jump and say, yes, you're in, do it again, or no, no, good try. And we move through that pretty quickly, but I think it just gives those kids once again, an opportunity to be seen. And we go to the tumbling and they'll start with basic tumbling and then they work their way up through those skills until we get down to the highest, most elite skills. But once again, every kid having an opportunity to be on the floor, to be recognized um, and to represent their school, which I think is a really cool opportunity for everybody. So I, I highly encourage that you tell your kids um, to get out there because you never know. I think I would be in the good try category, and I would get to go uh, pretty quick on the out. But I will tell you, uh, and I'm a little biased being the director of TAPS, I'm always just highly motivated by the skills I see our young people have. It's uh, It's been fun to see the development and the progression there because, again, uh, we see cheer once a year or we see it on the sideline. We don't necessarily see that competition world. We're going to jump to COVID real quick. COVID's still here. Uh, the only thing that I would highly encourage each of you to do is make sure you're aware of your COVID restrictions at your school because we support local rules. So uh, we're not going to require masks, but yes, you can cheer with masks. We're not going to require spacing. What we are going to require and ask is that the groups uh, up in the uh, stands separate yourselves. Just stay with your group, move around a little bit. Uh, you've all come down on the bus together or you stayed together that night at the hotel. So just that part we get, but we want to keep some separation between our schools. Uh, the other health concern, just remember that Children's Health Andrews Institute is there. Uh, we have Doc Smarava, and uh, we also have uh, – full licensed trainer there for both the uh, – they're, they're covering both the competition floor and the warm-up area. We hope we never have to use them, but so glad that we have quality individuals there to help us take it through. So, again, TAPS Cheer 2022, it's coming your way. It's powered by Express Cheer. Chris Hansen and his staff do such a great job to get us forward. And uh, just encourage, any question is, is good to 
have. Info at taps.biz. Don't make assumptions. Info at taps.biz. We'll get it to Chris and his staff. If we can't answer it, 254-947-9268 is the phone number. Rhonda, any closing thoughts on your side? Just want to thank Chris Henson again for being here with us and just um, giving us um, some valuable information to go back. And obviously, if you're on here, go back and watch this again and listen to it again. But I'm looking forward to a great year. Like we said, send questions if you have any. And um, and Chris, do you have anything, any closing remarks or anything you'd like to say? Um, I think we've said it, but I'll okay. say it again, nope. which is <laughs> if you have questions, please reach out. Don't wait till the day of the championship and say you did not know. Yeah, that's, I'm a resource yeah. and I am happy to answer any questions. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate that. And with that, we're going to turn this back to John. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Chris and Will. And thank you, folks, for being here today. Once again, this recording will be made available later this afternoon. You're going to receive an email with a link to our YouTube playlist that has all of our webinars on it uh, in about an hour. Uh, but this video will be made available later this afternoon. Uh, one more thing to plug. Um, We've got two episodes on our on our podcast, Taps Talk, devoted to Taps Cheer. Episode six is a deep dive into the contest with interviews from coaches in both spirit and traditional categories. Hear about their programs and how they prepare, as well as a breakdown of the contest itself with plenty of sound from our state events. And we've got a short episode from last year's competition that includes, or the year before's competition that includes a short interview with Chris, who you just heard from. Uh, you can subscribe to Taps Talk on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I put a link down in the chat below. Okay, folks, you enjoy the rest of your day, and we will see you soon.